Assalamualaikum and a very good day. Uh, my name is Muhammad Zahri bin Baharum from the Faculty of Mechanical and Automotive Engineering Technology, University of Malaysia, Pahang. So for this lecture, this is uh, the third lecture for the courses of uh, Design for Manufacturing Assembly, the FME course. This is the third topic, which is the production product design for manual assembly. So in this uh, third chapter, there are three parts. So this lecture video is the first part for the topic of product design for manual assembly. So in this uh, video, we will discuss about the uh, design guideline for manual assembly. Yeah? So this is the objective of this lecture. So what are the general design guideline for manual assembly? So the process of manual assembly uh, can be divided into two separate areas, uh, which are first is handling, second is the insertion and fastening. What are the processes or the tasks in the handling? Handling is like uh, acquiring, orienting and moving the parts yeah so these are kind of a task in this area and for the insertion and fastening is about the mating a part to another part or group of parts yeah so these are two separate areas of the manual assembly okay so design guideline on the part handling yeah so i i i show here the uh, figures of uh, related to the part handling so design parts that have end to end symmetry and rotational symmetry about the axis of rotation if this is cannot uh, be achieved try uh, to design parts having the maximum possible symmetry yeah so it is better to design uh, a parts which is symmetrical if it cannot be symmetrical then try to be as close as possible to symmetry yeah to as a design guideline for part handling to ease the assembly process yeah if the part cannot be symmetric uh, design parts that are obviously asymmetric so you can see here there is a uh, two figures one is a slightly asymmetrical and the other one is pronounced asymmetrical yeah try try to do to design a part that uh, heading to a symmetrical shape yeah for the part handling okay and also provide features that will prevent uh, jamming of parts that tend to nest or stack when stored in bulk yeah if you can see here so if you design um, a part like with this shape it will jam and the other one it's cannot jam yeah and then uh, avoid features that will allow tangling of parts when stored in bulk yeah so the first figure with the red box will tangle and the other one will not tangle so this is kind of a features uh, that you may consider to when when you're designing a product yeah okay okay uh, when we do the assembly so we have to handle the parts yeah so avoid parts that stick together or are slippery delicate uh, flexible or very small yeah and avoid parts also which are very large and hazardous to the handler or the assembler or the operator so the parts that are sharp splinter easily or etc avoid those kind of parts uh, make sure that you you consider uh, these three uh, guidelines yeah, when designing a part you can see in the picture and the part is very small so it's very hard for your fingers to handle it also a slippery part a flexible part and also a sharp part a sharp part is not just difficult to be handled and it, but it is also dangerous yeah okay so for the insertion and fastening design so that there is a little or no resistance to the insertion and provide chamfers 
to guide insertion of two mating parts and you should put a generous clearance should be provided but care must be taken to avoid clearances that uh, will result in a tendency for parts to jam or hang up during the insertion yeah you can see in the figure uh, the first picture with the red box the part jams across the corners yeah and then uh, if you do it in the second design so the parts cannot jam so there are amounts for generous of a clearance yeah in designing the part okay these are also an examples of the provisions of air relief pass, uh, passage to improve insertion into blind holes so you can see uh, if you design like the first the insertion is difficult insertion is difficult and then the second one you it shows the hole in work uh, hole in pain and also flat on pain yeah so uh, the following figures is uh, the design for ease of insertion uh, regarding the assembly of long step uh, bushing into counterboard hold yeah the first figure you can see is difficult to be inserted and the second design is easy to 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 insert yeah for the long step bushing yeah into a counter counterboard hole yeah and in this design the next one the provision of chambers to allow easy insertions uh, this looks like a spring yeah if you make a design like the first one the part can hang up but if you do a design like the second picture the part falls into place yeah so it can uh, allow easy insertion and also avoid the problem of hanging up yeah uh, the next one is the standardized parts. Yeah, you see, uh, standardized by using common parts, uh, processors, and methods across all models and even across product lines to permit the use of higher volume processes that normally result in lower product costs. Yeah, so usually, like the screw, bolt, and nuts, and there are a lot of uh, uh, common parts that been used. Yeah. Uh, for different products in in a company so in order to reduce the product cost and also uh, to manage a bet to have a better management of all the parts you know, so the company uh, encourage all the designers to use the common parts yeah okay uh, another design guideline on the insertion and fastening so you can also use uh, pyramid assembly to provide for progressive assembly about one axis of reference yeah a pyramid shape yeah pyramid assembly so in general it is best to assemble from from above yeah single axis uh, pyramid assembly as shown in the figure and then uh, about uh, self locating so avoid the necessity for holding parts down to maintain their orientation during manipulations of the sub assembly or during the placements of another product so if holding down is required then you you must try to design so that the part is secured uh, as soon as possible after it has been inserted yeah like in the figure so holding down and alignment required for subsequent operation yeah and then uh, Design so that a part is located before it is released. Uh, you can see on the left, the first figure, the the part must be released before it is located. So when you release the part, it might go into the target hole, but it can it, it is also possible to be misaligned and not going into uh, the desired point. Yeah, while in the second design you can see yeah that the length of the kind of a nail shaft nail uh, ship or the pin so the part is located before you release so your finger still have a few clearances before you release the the cap of the pin yeah yeah this is a, a good design and also a, an example of a bad design yeah to ease the insertion and fastening okay so when common mechanical fasteners are used so the following sequence indicates the relative cost uh, of the different fastening processes 
to listed in order of increasing manual assembly cost. Yeah, first is the snap fit, second is the plastic bending, third is uh, riveting, four is the screw fastening. So from the rank of uh, the bottom figure is the snap fastening up until the last one is the screw fastening. So the cost will increase. Yeah. So meaning that the snap fit is much cheaper than the screw fastening. Okay. So there is also uh, uh, the drawbacks. What what are the drawbacks? The drawbacks is first there is no means by which to evaluate a design quantitatively for its ease of assembly. Second, there is no relative ranking of all guidelines that can be used by the designers to uh, indicate which guidelines result in the greatest improvements in handling, insertion, and fastening. Yeah, so there is no relative ranking. So with these drawbacks, there is no way to estimate the improvement due to the elimination of a part or due to redesign of a part. So it is then uh, impossible for the designer to know which guidelines to emphasize during the design of the product. Uh, third, the, the third drawback is uh, these guidelines are simply a set of rules that provide the designer with uh, suitable background information yeah, to be used to develop a design that will be more easily assembled than a design developed without such a background. Yeah? So it is an approach must be used that provides the designer with an organized method that encourage the design of a product that is easy to assemble. And the method must also provide an estimate of how much easier it is to assemble uh, one design with certain features than to assemble another design with uh, different features. Yeah. So that's it uh, for this uh, lecture. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy and see you soon. Thank you.